is an ideal exercise to preserve muscle mass in your legs as you get older? Cycling. As you pedal a bicycle, you're targeting the muscles that are most likely to shrink and atrophy with age, particularly the quadriceps muscles of the thighs. In fact, as your foot pedals through 360 degrees of the crank cycle on a bike, you exercise all the major muscle groups of the legs. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today I'm going to talk about how cycling offers the perfect human machine interface for making your legs more powerful. When you're on a bike, your body is a kinetic chain allowing forces to transfer from your upper body down to your legs and finally to the pedals. So how are your leg muscles activated as your foot pedals around the crank cycle? To make it simple, you can imagine the crank cycle as a clock face with the top dead center at zero degrees or 12 o'clock on the clock face. 90% of your total power output occurs during the power phase as your foot pedals from top dead center down to bottom dead center at 180 degrees or six o'clock on a clock phase. Your foot then moves through the recovery phase as it goes from 180 degrees back up to 360 degrees at the top. Generally speaking, your leg is extending as you go from top to bottom of the crank cycle and then flexing as you go from bottom back up to top of the cycle. The muscles doing the work here are those that span the hip joint, the knee joint, and the ankle joint. In the period just before and after top dead center, so from about 315 degrees to about 45 degrees, the rectus femoris, one of the muscles of the quadriceps group, is flexing the hip and extending the knee to move you forward in space. This is a biarticular muscle acting at two different joints at the same time, the hip and the knee. The powerful gluteus maximus and the vasti muscles of the quadriceps start to activate to get ready for the forceful downward push of the power phase. These are uniarticular muscles, meaning that each muscle acts on one joint at a time. You generate the most power from 45 degrees to 135 degrees in the middle of the power phase as your hip and knee extend out from a flex position at the top dead center. The gluteus maximus extends the hip as the vasti muscles extend the knee. So by the time your leg gets to bottom dead center, it's nearly vertical. At the same time, the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles of your calf work to stabilize your ankle so that you can effectively transfer force down to your foot. Most of this upper body force is transmitted through the ligaments of the ankle down to the pedal. This is in contrast to force transmission in the upper leg where the force generated is, is actually transmitted directly from muscle to bone. As your foot is moving downward in the crank cycle, you must produce enough force to overcome resistance at the pedal and also lift the opposite leg on the other pedal during its recovery phase. This is where you're really working the muscles that are most likely to shrink and atrophy as you age, your quadriceps muscles. So the rectus femoris and all the vasti muscles. Remember that your quadriceps muscles activate 
to move your body out of a chair. During the bottom of the crank cycle from about 135 degrees, just before bottom dead center to about 225 degrees, most of the downward force produced is actually just due to inertia rather than from muscle activation. As your foot moves back up from bottom to top, so going from 180 degrees at bottom dead center back up to 360 degrees at top, it's in the recovery phase. At this point, power is being absorbed because forces are directed towards the ground. You're not producing any force moving you forward while your foot is in the recovery phase. Attempting to pull up or generate positive power during recovery phase is metabolically inefficient in, in the long term and is really only helpful for very short periods of time when you want to maximize mechanical efficiency. In the recovery phase, overall leg movements is that of bending or flexing of the hip and of the knee. Below the knee in the calf, the tibialis, or in the front of the leg, I should say, the tibialis anterior muscle is active in stabilizing your ankle so that force can be transmitted down that kinetic chain to your foot on the pedal. This muscle, the tibialis anterior, also dorsiflexes the foot or points it in a heel down position so that it can clear the top of the crank cycle. When your right foot is in the recovery phase, your left foot is on the opposite side of the bicycle in the downward power phase of the crank cycle. On a bicycle, the cranks extend 180 degrees in opposite directions. So your right leg is flexed while your left leg is extended and vice versa. This paired arrangement allows the flexor muscles on one leg to work at the same time as the extensor muscles are firing on the opposite side. Every time your foot goes around the crank cycle, you are working all of the major muscle groups of your leg in a sequence. The powerful quadriceps muscles that are used in the power phase of the crank cycle, so as you ex fully extend your leg, these muscles are also the first muscles to shrink and atrophy if you don't use them. These muscles are critically important as you age as they allow you to get up out of a chair in the first place. Thank you for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you.